speaking of longevity, the the guy who's kind of avoiding time maybe as well as anyone ever has uh, is Novak Djokovic. And, you know, it, it's been kind of a, an inconsistent start to the year, right? Uh, switched up his schedule in Australia, normally just shows up and plays the Aussie Open, went early um, after playing late into the season last year, playing, you know, Davis Cup and having an extended season, started early. Um, I, I, you know, I, 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 I often find myself sitting in this chair going, well, that's, a, that's kind of a weird thing, but then I'm also having to remind myself that this guy's won 25 Grand Slams, and what the hell do I know? Like, who's going to tell him anything at this point about decision-making and scheduling? Um, but, it, it, you know, semis in how, Australia. How many, how many Grand Slams? It's just 20, 20, it's so many, it's so many Grand Slams. It's, it's so many Grand Slams. It's like all Yeah, I think you gave an extra one, but that's all right. You earned it. We'll give it 25. Yeah, sorry. What did I say? 25. We'll give it, give it to him. Give him an extra one. He deserves it. Oh, sorry. What did I say? 24. Can you dub that over? Mike, here, here. I'm going to show you the magic of, of television and, and, and audio pod right now. You ready? Okay. You ready, Mike? Silence. 24. That's what you're going to hear. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, oh, I forget what I said. Anyways, um, but the big news this week is moving on from from Goran Ivanišević, and you know, in kind of an unNovak type year, and I say that with sensitivity before everyone goes all Twitter fingers and says like, you know, what the hell do you know? I'm agreeing with you with the what the hell do I know? But there are variances in in this season versus previous uh, starts to the season of which he is normally a very fast starter. Uh, what do you make of of this Goran news? Um, and were you surprised by it? I was because there's been, I mean, I was and I wasn't. I mean, you know, you start, you know, like you're used to his level. He's sort of a victim of his own success and suddenly he hasn't won a tournament this year and things are not trending in the right direction. You make some changes in a way, you say, great. It shows that he's still, uh, still tinkering. He has now changed manager, agent. He's promoted his hitting partner to manager. And now there's a coaching change. That's a lot of churn for the guy who won three of the four majors last year. I am um, sidebar. I was looking up. He said, "You said, well, who would coach him? Well, he's probably not going to start a new relationship, right? Um, probably." And then he said, "Well, who else has coached him in the past? You, did you ever know this sidebar? You know, Todd Martin did a brief stint as Novak's coach. A little trivia. Um, I so I don't. You know, I mean, I, I think it shows he, he's a seeker. He's always looking to to, to change things. He'll change his diet when he doesn't feel good. I mean, this is not someone who necessarily is um, wed to tradition and is change averse. It is a little strange. We're talking about this with uh, you know with Jesse Pagula and with with, um, with Holger Rude. I mean, it's it's a little bit strange that uh, the number one player in the world is is changing coaches. I wonder. Let, let me ask you this: When we think about who's going to take that role, does he need a coach? I mean, what at this stage of the game? He's got a hitting partner who doubles as a manager. What mm-hmm. what does he need a coach for? Well, there's it, basically what we're asking is: Is he someone who craves the conversation, or is he someone that just knows what he knows inherently and fully? Um, the way that he kind of goes back and forth with his box, it seems like he craves that communication. Um, you know, so behind it doesn't, but it's also like a weirdly framed question because does he need a coach? Probably not. Like, I think my my cat could coach him and do a pretty good job. He'd probably win a bunch of matches. Um, but the thing is, he's 37. When things, it's a weird moment where, you know, does he think that he's in there with these other three, you know, superhumans? Um, I would think that you would want someone. I don't think that you would do a trial run with no coach before Roland Garros uh, in Wimbledon. To me, uh, the most logical version of events, and again, I say this knowing I have no inside knowledge. You have a thousand times more inside knowledge of the way that Novak's camp works. But if I'm Novak uh, and have have won that many slams, um, I would want something consistent where I didn't feel like I was getting to know someone in in the six weeks leading into or you know two months leading into Roland Garros, and then it's a quick turnaround. Three weeks after that, you're you're center court at, at Wimbledon again. So my mind automatically goes to Marion Vida because that's the guy who kind of is in and then he's out and then he's kind of sometimes back in. It seems like this consistent uh, insurance policy and that's nothing to take away from, I mean, he's, he's, you know, more so than anyone helped develop Novak, right. And turn him into the person, not just kind of, you know, tag along uh, on, on other successes. And, you know, another name that, you know, Novak to his credit really stood by. Yeah. Stood by during rough times who, 
uh, didn't work in his most recent coaching gig is Boris Becker. Um, they had a they had a lot of success. And so if I'm Novak and I have a hitting putter and I have all, all this infrastructure and maybe I don't need someone there all the time, but at Wimbledon, when you're breaking down a matchup, even if it's just confirmation bias, right? I'm going into this, I think this, and Becker goes, well, yeah, yeah, I, I see that too. That 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 holds a lot of water in the psyche uh, of an athlete. So for me, outside looking in, knowing nothing, that seems like a very comfortable landing spot that has proven successes. Now, I don't exactly know why they stopped in the first place. So you don't know if there's any scar tissue that's unspoken. I've certainly, um, you know, Brad and I broke up and it was, you know, it was pretty rough for a couple of years and we eventually got over it. So you think like enough time passes, um, you know, it'd be worth revisiting. But if I'm Novak, I got to think I would bring in someone who at least knows the way I operate who knows uh, the rest of the team uh, that is around me. Um, I, I don't know. I, I would be shocked if it's like he just takes a swing and brings someone entirely entirely new in. But, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'll probably be wrong, I'm sure. This is someone who doesn't like conventional wisdom. This is someone who, uh, by his own yeah. admission, can be sort of hard-headed. I, I just wonder if he says, you know what, at this stage in the game, I'm always looking for sort of new challenges, I don't know if I need someone to console. I, I know the sport pretty well, and I can watch YouTube videos of the unknown Salvadorian opponent who qualified who I have to meet in round one. Um, I've got a hitting partner. I, I think you're right, though. I, I think Mary invited that style. It's sort of like the old boxing, right? You have these boxers, and they get back together with the old trainer. Um, that, to me, sounds, if I were if I were a betting man, which I'm not, that would um, sound like the most... Uh, I mean, it's, it's an interesting part of the game. I just think... Um, does he does he need a coach as you say no could he could win matches uh you know with with a groucho marks mask on but i just think he might be considering trying to fly solo for a bit that wouldn't surprise me at all so you think there's a chance he goes full curious i think this is someone who loves challenging conventional wisdom and i think this is someone who loves exploring Oof. new frontiers He's a seeker. He's done Andre. He's done Boris Becker. He's done the major champions. He's also sort of done the comfort food that is married by that. I, I just, I could see him saying, you know what? Let me, let me try to fly solo here. We'll see how this goes. That's interesting. We'll see. Um, you know, I, I'm sure it's not going to be a subtle reentry, whether that's in Monte, Monte Carlo and he walks in with someone like, I think there's going to be, I, I, I think he's going to, his uh, private training sessions, I think are going to be a little bit more uh, public um as as he makes this change but I'll, it'll be i'll be curious to see it and also like let's let's flip the side of it like we're saying novak what's he looking for <clears throat> that's a really intimidating situation to walk into no matter what your credentials are like i'm gonna go like i you know on a short like people have been no more in the world i go in i don't know what i'm telling him besides like you're doing you're doing great like you're the best like what, what am i going to tell him that's an intimidating pre that's an intimidating especially if you feel like three other guys have kind of consistently been gaining on him, you know, last year's Wimbledon, obviously, you know, it, it, it's, it needs to be said at 37 years old, there is no precedent ever in our sport of being number one in the world. Like he has out punted the field on that. And at some point time and talent comes for you, right? Is this that moment? Do you want to be part of the coaching, uh, so, you know, quote unquote solution with this brigade coming and not kind of, knowing what you're dealing with. And also like, I would second guess every single thing I told Novak. I would be so insecure about having an opinion based on his IQ, his tennis IQ and, and what he's accomplished. Uh, you know, it's, it's, so the other side of that is, is intimidating as well. I think. That's, that's an interesting point. I mean, you know, you're also talking about a guy who did win three majors and came yeah. within a couple of loose points of winning all four. So it's, uh, you're, you're not exactly buy, buying too much on the dip. And also, I think one thing that's just really interesting about all this, if, if I had told you six months ago that Novak Djokovic would be, you know, he played the first three months of the year and wouldn't win a title and he'd lose to a guy outside the top 100, you say, oh, I bet, you know, father time has come, he must be banged up. This is not about being physically compromised. And I think in a way that sort of adds a challenge to the coaching. We're not just saying, hey, wait till the knee gets healthy and then we'll retool our schedule. This seems 
sort of much more personal. Um, again, we referenced that very strange withdrawal uh, announcement he made for Miami when usually they say, well, you know, my physio says I need the time off and I look forward to returning. This was much more uh, sort of personal and made vague allusions to sort of motivation and family situation. And uh, it would be a challenge to come in at the same time. What's a greater challenge than finding, you know, so it's like the, the sports movie piano starts tinkling right now, right? I mean, what, what's a greater challenge with finding the guy who's, does the old guy still have something in him to win that 25th major surpassing Margaret Court? Well, yeah, him, he does because he, he, he did it three times last year. Yeah, exactly. Like it's not um, as if you're searching for something like that was from like three years ago. I mean, right. this this isn't exactly. I it's, not like George, just, uh, it's not like George Foreman winning the, the the heavyweight title after not boxing for 15 years. Yeah, exactly. Um, I you know it's I'm sure there are a lot of coaches on the sidelines that would be happy to take on that challenge as, as fraud as it might be.